around 30% of Russia's nuclear arsenal, which consists of approximately 5,580 warheads, is within range of Ukrainian drones and missiles, according to Foreign Affairs media outlet. Because Ukrainian drone assaults have already reached as far as Moscow, it is clear that at least 14 Russian nuclear storage sites now fall within range of its drones. At least two of those sites are less than 100 miles from the Ukrainian border, well within striking range of the more damaging missiles Ukraine already possesses, and another five sites lie less than 200 miles from the border, close to or just beyond the range of the advanced Western-provided missiles that Ukraine is seeking permission to use against conventional targets in Russia. Foreign Affairs says, the author of the article notes that there are no signs that Ukrainian forces are intentionally targeting nuclear warhead storage sites. However, it is the Russian government's responsibility to move its nuclear warheads out of the way of danger. Russia knows that its warheads should not be positioned anywhere near conventional military operations. After Ukraine launched its first drone and missile attacks against Belgorod in the spring of 2023, Russia quickly reported that its Belgorod storage site was no longer storing nuclear warheads, acknowledging that warheads should not be stored anywhere near active fighting. But remarkably, there have been no Russian announcements about the status of the warheads it has at any of its other storage sites, Foreign Affairs says. The author suggests several possible explanations for this. Russian leader Vladimir Putin may believe that relocating the country's nuclear warheads would be seen as a sign of weakness. The Russian leadership may be unaware of the risks posed by these warheads. The Russian military may fear that the West would misinterpret the relocation of warheads as preparation for a nuclear attack, potentially leading to a preemptive strike by NATO. The possibility that a Ukrainian drone or missile will strike a warhead and create an explosion that distributes fissile material is already a major risk, but it is not the only one. Even more dangerous is the possibility that a Ukrainian missile strike or territorial takeover could throw a storage site into operational chaos, allowing rogue actors to seize its nuclear warheads or inadvertently prompt Russian nuclear escalation. Foreign Affairs reports the author underscores that Russia breached a sacred tenet of nuclear security by launching attacks against Ukraine from military bases that store nuclear warheads, thus making those bases a legitimate target for counter-offensives. He points out that since March 2022, Russia has been using the Engels-2 airbase to launch strikes on Ukraine with Kinzhal missiles, which are capable of carrying nuclear warheads. The author believes that there are probably dozens of nuclear warheads stored less than four miles from the Engels-2 base's main airfields. Russia is also thought to store dozens of nuclear warheads for short-range aircraft at the Yeysk and Morozovsk airbases. All of these airbases are known to have been attacked by Ukrainian forces multiple times. Foreign Affairs notes that a strike on a storage site would not in itself cause a nuclear explosion of the warheads. The threat arises when a warhead is outside a bunker, such as during transportation for maintenance within a storage site or at a rail transfer point. A mostly smooth election day nationwide was marred in multiple battleground states Tuesday by a series of bomb threats and baseless claims of wrongdoing by former President Donald Trump. The bomb threats in parts of Arizona, Georgia and Pennsylvania turned out to be hoaxes, but forced evacuations and some polling places to extend hours. The threats were reported throughout the day at polling locations in three metro Atlanta counties, all with large numbers of Democratic voters and into the evening at voting locations in Pennsylvania, forcing evacuations. Bomb threats also were reported at three voting locations in Navajo County, Arizona, according to the Secretary of State's office. In an evening news conference, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro acknowledged there had been multiple bomb threats called into voting locations across the state, but said thus far there is no credible threat to the public. Every legal, eligible vote will be counted and counted accurately, and the will of the people in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will be respected," said Shapiro, a Democrat. In Chester County, Pennsylvania an emailed bomb threat lead local officials to clear the one of the buildings while it was checked by explosive detection dogs. 
Officials report nothing had been found and reopened the building, extending opening hours for another two hours. In a statement, the Pennsylvania State Police said they were working with local partners to respond, if needed. Neither Shapiro nor police gave more details about who might be behind the bomb threats or why Shapiro believed there was no threat to the public. As Election Day voting neared its end, the former president began making unsubstantiated claims about voting and law enforcement in the biggest cities in Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Good evening, everyone. We've also been made aware that in the course of the last hour, multiple bomb threats have been called into polling locations and municipal buildings across Pennsylvania. My team and I have been in direct communication with Pennsylvania State Police Colonel Christopher Paris, who was coordinating with local and federal law enforcement, as well as Pima. State and local law enforcement, along with the FBI, are investigating these threats, and thus far there is no credible threat to the public. As the votes are counted, I urge everyone to be patient to avoid spreading or repeating any myths or disinformation, and to rely on trusted sources of election information, like the Department of State's Election Returns website. Every legal eligible vote will be counted and counted accurately, and the will of the people here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will be respected. The building is safe and secure. We work with Chester County Detectives, local law enforcement, uh, providing some assistance to secure the building. But we also contacted the FBI immediately. Um, we've been in coordination with the FBI about this threat. I can tell everyone that this appears to be overseas in origin. I'll defer to the FBI's statement about where it is, but I know they're working off an idea that some of the IP addresses are coming from Russia. And what is clear from all the recent news reports and information from the FBI is that this is part of a persistent, coordinated attempt to call in bomb threats to swing states in order to disrupt the election. And we prepared here in Chester County for something like this. We deployed all of our resources just like we planned. And I'm happy to say that the building is safe, but the threat appears to be dubious. And we are functioning as if, just like we planned. We are very grateful we are now back in the building. We did not lose much time and um, mail-in ballots are being counted. There's really no delay because that's in a different building. So we are set up to start collecting the vote tallies at the GSC and everything is running smoothly.